I create a video because of your comment, I'll give you a shout out. So be sure to let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. All right, this video is going to cover um, how to, I don't want to say multi-thread uh, because that's not the right term. I guess maybe hyper-thread uh, with an Arduino. Uh, basically, it, it's multitasking. So how can you do multiple things at once uh, without and avoid using delays? Okay, so as my use case here, I have set up with uh, my code from my button uh, video where I push this button, okay, and check this out. And every time I push the button, it says hello. Okay, uh, let me just run through this code real quick. My button is attached to pin 8. Um, oh, I didn't put this. This should be an input pull-up. Uh, so I set up my serial begin. I set up my pin mode as a pull-up resistor so that uh, the pin mode is normally high, and when I push the button, it will be driv driven low, um, which is why I have pressed equal to false, because that's a low. So I read the current state of the button. If the button is pressed, meaning if it's, if it's false, uh, then I have serial print hello. And while the button is pressed, I do nothing. So that way I can I can press it down, and it's not going to continue to sit there and print out hello over and over and over again. Okay. And likewise, there's no delay. I can push hello as many times as I want. So I'm not using a delay in that case. Now. Let's say I wanted to blink this LED pin 13. So normally, you know that the the basic thing you'd look up is your, you know, you go to your examples, your basics, and your blink, right? And if we look in this, so pin mode LED, I don't like that they did this because, you know, this there's already a variable for this pin. So why make your own? Okay, but basically the digital write pin 13 or whatever pin your LED is on on your board, an Arduino Uno, it's pin 13. Um, they turn it on, they wait one second, they turn it off, and they wait one second. Now, if I put this code in mine, so let's do blank LED, right? And then also I'll copy over the, oops. I copy over the pin mode. Okay, so now that's all I need. So now if I upload this, let me just make sure my stuff's set up right. Uno, that's the right board. Uh, okay. Let's upload. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's done uploading. So now you can see my LEDs blinking. So let's open up the serial monitor. Let's push. Okay. No. Oh, got one. But see, because of those delays, it's not triggering the hello. And you know, it has to be timed exactly right. So it has to be coming just after this uh, 1,000 millisecond delay. And right at this point, I have to be pressing the button. If it's not pressed at this point, it'll skip over it, and it won't even do it again before it blinks again. So how do we avoid this? Well, um, first off, we need to separate, do what I call separation of concerns, okay? And basically what that means is just make functions for your different things. Oops, it's a function. Um, so I'll call this blink, right? Okay, so then instead of all that code, I just write blink here. Okay, same thing. And then same thing here, I could do like read button, Right, and then I just need to create a function called read button. Now, generally, that's not a good idea because you're actually serial printing in here, and your functions shouldn't be printing stuff. It's it should only be reading the button. But this is just for a tutorial. So I read the button and I blink. But the thing is, okay, delay is in here, so I don't need to worry about that. This one, however, I do need to worry about. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to somehow get a sense of what time, how long has the LED been off, how long has the LED been on. So what I'll do is I'll create a, 
I'll create a variable for the LED state. Uh, we'll just call it false. So false LED is off. So we initially assume it's off. And we can even do that by saying Okay, so now we know, all right, but we need that, that sort of sense of time. So what I'm going to do is during the initialization of the first loop, I'll create a time, uh, let's call this, and I, I, again, I do my videos kind of on the fly, so it's not scripted or anything, and I'm just sort of running through this exactly how I would run through it. So I would say current time, uh, and I'm using a long, that's specific because the uh, millis, and I could even use micros, but I don't need micros. Um, I'm only going down to 1000 milliseconds. If I was doing like one millisecond or four, milli four or five milliseconds, then I might use micros because I want it to be exactly four or five uh, milliseconds. And that would be four or 5,000 microseconds. But anything over, I think like 16 microseconds, it starts to not be as accurate. Um, so anytime you're doing more than 16, uh, sorry, 16 milliseconds, uh, anytime you're doing more than 16 milliseconds, you should always use the millis. So what millis does is it, it returns the amount of time that has elapsed since the Arduino was turned on. So as soon as I turn this on, the first time it's going to read something, it's going to be however long it took to boot up, um, and start and run the setup function. And then the first thing it's going to do, so let's say it takes 10 milliseconds to perform this and get to this point. So the first time I read this, it's going to say current time equals 10. Um, but the thing is, I need to change this blink so that it uses the current state. So it says, um, there's a few ways I could do this. Um, but basically, let's digital write the current state of the LED. And we'll change the state before we do that. So we'll do LED state equals not LED state. So what that's saying is if LED state initially is false, okay, so not false is true. So this evaluates to true. And then we're saying LED state equals true. Likewise, the next time it comes around, if it says LED state is, is true, it's going to say not LED state, which is going to be false. So this is just a simple way to toggle, um, to toggle your LED state. And instead of doing this, we don't need that. So, but the thing here is we need to say, well, how long, how much time has elapsed? And we need to pass that in from the loop. So we'll add a very or a parameter here, long. Uh, let's see, current time, and you don't necessarily have to do this uh, because this is only one function, but if you're going to be doing multiple functions, then you'd want to capture that the current time once at the start of the loop and then pass that current time into each function as you go through your loop. That way it knows exactly what time it was when it started. Okay, so then let's say... Um, you know what I'll do? I'm going to change this up a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to do is do, I'm going to create the current time here. And then what I'll do is I'll calculate the elapsed time here. And we'll call this elapsed milliseconds. Yeah, I like that better. So get time elapsed. And the first time you, you do this, it's, it's going to be, we don't know exactly what it's going to be because we're capturing the time, the initial time here, and then we're going to capture the time again here. So elapsed time is going to be, so long elapsed time equals, and we're doing millis because that's the current time, minus whatever the previous time was. Okay, so we might actually want to change that. 
We'll call that last time. All right, and then we need to update last time. So last time equals last time plus elapsed time. Now notice I didn't use millis here. I could use millis, but there is the slight case where you could be off by one millisecond or, you know, in the case where you're doing microseconds, you could be off by quite a few microseconds between here and here, here and here. So what I did was I took the last time plus the elapsed time. So this way, every time I'm at the exact time that I should be. Okay, and then I'm not going to use last time until it loops back up and I use it here. But I have to modify it after here because I'm using it here. And otherwise, if I update it, it's going to give me the wrong value. Okay, so we're passing in the elapsed time to each one. So now what I would do is inside of my function, I can create uh, what's called a static variable. And what this is, is it's a variable that is only, vi only visible within this function, but it doesn't get reset each time you leave the function, like a normal uh, variable that's passed in or a variable that's created in it would. So static long elapsed, uh, sorry, we'll do, um, I don't know, we'll call it LED time. equals zero. Okay, so we're initially creating it to setting it to zero. But now from here on out, after this is called once, you can kind of pretend like this never existed. And then what I'll do is I'll say, if LED, oh, sorry. Uh, what I'll do is first I'll update our current time, update total elapsed time. So LED time plus equals, it's the same as saying equals LED time plus elapsed time. And now if LED time is greater than or equal to 1000, then we want to turn, flip the state and then turn the LED on or off or whatever the case may be. I'm going to use Control or Command T here to auto indent. All right, but there's one more thing um, because once it's over 1,000, it's always going to be over 1,000. So in here, I'll also reset my LED time back to zero. Now, I guess the right way to do this would be, uh, let's see, how would I do this? Um, LED time equals LED time minus 1,000. But now we're getting into the point where I'm using um, 1,000 twice, and I don't like that because if I change this, then I might forget to change this. Um, so what I might do is create another uh, another static variable. Uh, for this, I'm not going to, but you know, just because I want to keep this kind of simple, um, also might want to fix that typo. So what I'm doing is this way, in case it happens to be over 1,000, like maybe it comes in and it's at 1,010 milliseconds, it will still trigger and then LED time will be updated to be 10 milliseconds so that that way I'm making sure that every time the LED hits, it's at exactly 1,000 milliseconds. Or at least as close as I can get to being 1,000 milliseconds. Obviously, you're going to be limited to the speed of the Arduino itself. So if I'm looking at this right, I think this is good. And I kept this here in its own code inside the loop because this is kind of a function that's it's uh, more native to the entire application itself. These, the code that was here for read button and for blink were kind of specific to blink and read button. So those can go in their own function. But this one is kind of used for the entire application. So oh, the other thing I need to do is pass in that elapsed time. And that was calculated up here. So just to run through this real quick, again, I've uh, set up my I've set up my pins here. And again, this one's black because that's a custom. It's my own uh, variable, and Arduino is not aware of my the Arduino IDE is not aware of my variables that I create. Um, 
then I set up my pin mode for my LED as an output. Um, I set my LED to initially be off because that's what I want, or well, technically to whatever LED state I have. All right, so here I'm calculating the amount of time that has elapsed, and then I'm updating the last time that Millie's was recorded. I read the button, and then I blink, and I pass in the elapsed time. Now, I'm calling blink, but it's not always going to blink every time I call this. It's only going to blink when I get here. So here, it's going to update the amount of time that's passed for the LED specifically if LED time is greater than or equal to 1,000. Now, another key here, you don't want to have equal equal 1,000 because if it comes in at 999 or 1,001, you're going to miss it, and then you're never going to hit it because it's never going to go down it's never going to go down to 1000 if you if you go past it. So a lot of times what's good to do is even if you're looking for it to be exactly 1000, you want to put in that greater than just so you're not getting stuck trying to look for exactly 1000 because you might not get to that point because the Arduino microcontroller, the 80 mega is only 16 megahertz. Okay, so again, um, finishing off this code that I'm reading here. If the LED time is greater than or equal to 1000, then I change the state. So that's going to change this to on the first time. It's going to change that to true. I'm going to digital write true, which is going to turn the LED on. And then I'm going to reset the LED time to subtract the thousand milliseconds that I waited. And then so the next time it comes through, it's going to be currently it's going to be on. So if the LED time is greater than 1000 or equal to 1000, it's going to turn the state to false. It's going to write a false, which is going to turn it off. And then it's going to subtract the 1000 again. So if all goes well, this should work and it should be a pretty quick video. Let's, let's uh, try it out. All right. So elapsed time was not declared. Oh, because I called it elapsed MS. Now here I liked calling it elapsed MS because that clearly identifies when you're inside the function, that this is a millisecond time. I could change it up here as well, which would probably be a good idea, but since I already have it all written in there, I'll just leave it the way it is. All right, uh, digital write. Okay, obviously I didn't tell it which pin to change. All right, it's uploading, done uploading. All right, it's flashing. We got on, off, on, off. Okay, so it is working. You saw a couple flashes there because I hit the serial monitor. And when you turn the ser when you open the serial monitor um, with an Arduino specific board, then it will reset the the board itself. So now, if I push this button, hey, look at that! Not only is it flashing once every second, but I'm able to just sit here and push this button as much as I want, and it's getting triggered every single time. So uh, I made a few goofs in here, um, but hopefully that didn't throw you off too much. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's it. So hopefully this helps you learn how to run two different things at once and try to avoid delays. Uh, just remember, try not to use these. Um, what I would do is probably add either another static variable or add a global variable that says like LED delay time or something like that. Uh, that way, if you change it here, you don't forget to change it here. But uh, yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.